Welcome to another edition of Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. Today, we're very pleased to welcome to the show Representative Sherry Bustos, who represents the 17th Congressional District in the House of Representatives. The 17th stretches west of Chicago from uh, Dubuque in the north all the way down south of Peoria. Representative Bustos serves on the All Important Appropriations Committee and the House Ag Committee, and is also the chairwoman of the DCCC, the political arm of the House Democrats. Representative Bustos, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, today is an exciting day. I think that uh, we can kind of uh, cover this a little bit in, the, in our conversation, that House leaders came out with a blueprint for an infrastructure bill. Of course, that's going to be focused a lot on economic development and workforce development. And I know those are two issues that you're extremely active on. And you actually do have two pieces of legislation that you have introduced on those two uh, issues specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about those two bills? I believe it's the Investing in uh, tomorrow, Tomorrow's Workforce Act and the Rebuild Rural America Act. Of course, I'm happy to. Um, have you laid out the framework at all for uh, what was announced today? Or do you want, uh, to, do you want to talk about that yeah, first? We, we can, we can the... jump into that. We, we kind of looked at it, and of course we took yeah. uh, kind of the, the more you know, encouraging step that we're actually moving forward on infrastructure. But I, I think that you know, from the engineering industry's perspective, the two things that are, of course, most pressing are reauthor- reauthorization of the FAST Act. Of yeah, course. yeah. But then also getting a word of done, which is, you know, Absolutely. Two, well, two and, and uh, you, you described my congressional district, but let mm-hmm. me just offer a, a little more context to that. Um, we have more locks and dams in the congressional district I represent than any congressional district in the country. Um, and that's because the entire western border of my district is the Mississippi River, mm-hmm. and then the Illinois River runs through the southern part of our congressional district. So, um, so uh, I- any kind of water infrastructure yeah. means a lot. And when, when you look at the Depression era locks and dam system, now, you know, um, seventy-five ish plus years old, um, you know, we've, we've got to look at investing in that. But the reason I answered your question mm-hmm. with a question. Um, is, you know, today is a pretty momentous day. And um, I was at our caucus meeting earlier where we had the chair of of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, Peter DeFazio. We had the chair of um, Energy and Commerce, um, uh, Frank Pallone, and then we had the chair of Ways and Means, Richie Neal, all talk about the various components. And and I think it's important that we look at, you know, it's going to take all of that coming together. And it's not just... um, it's not just horizontal construction, it's the vertical construction as well. And I think that uh, we, as at least as House Democrats, want to take a look at this as being a very encompassing piece of legislation. Um, our, the couple bills that you reference in particular, Investing in Tomorrow's Workforce Act, um, is something that I introduced last October along with Senator Durbin. But that looks at uh, really the future of America um, as it pertains not just to infrastructure, but as, as it pertains to um, how people work. We are going to be seeing increased automation and we want to make sure that um, as a nation that we are ready for that and that people aren't going to be losing their jobs and not having anything to go to. So um, it helps prepare workers for the jobs of tomorrow mm-hmm. um, with, a, with a major investment in that. Uh, the other is the Rebuild Rural America Act. Also, uh, we introduced that last October. And that calls for uh, federal funding investment in rural and small town economic development projects. Um, again, further context of my congressional district, 85% of the towns in the district I serve are, are 5,000 people or fewer. Mm-hmm. And 60, about 60, 65% are 1,000 people or fewer. So, um, and, and we have to look at, you know, our, while we have our coastal big cities like, uh, you know, New York and LA, mm-hmm. we have our, Midwestern big cities like Chicago, but there's a whole lot of small towns in yeah. between, and we've got to make sure we're investing in that. This new bill that we rolled out today um, calls for major investment in rural America, um, and then the two bills that we just talked about that are um, out of our office address that as well. Absolutely. I mean, coming from my experience uh, with uh, former Chairman Schuster in his district, middle of Pennsylvania, uh, you know, you have Philadelphia, you got Pittsburgh, and then you have the rest of the state. Um, yeah, very similar to Illinois. Very similar, yeah. rural. You really need economic development. You need the work, workforce training. You need to be able to prepare those workers for, you know, the effects of the ripples in the economy that are really coming from automation. But then also uh, getting the training and understanding of, of, of opportunities that might come if you're able to get an infrastructure package done. 
and actually build out some of these massive projects that need to happen that attracts economic development into the districts, attracts these new companies that might be high on automation, for yeah. example, Amazon and the like. And I guess the segue from the engineering industry is that you know our member companies are going to be the ones who are going to be building a lot of those structures, whether it's going to be the roadways that lead you into the new opportunities mm -hmm. or the vertical structures, mm -hmm. uh, the warehousing or the data centers or the social infrastructure, the schools, hospitals that are actually going to be in those areas that everybody's going to benefit from. Uh, so it's all tied together. Yep. It's, it's, in no way is it, is, it, is it separate. And I think you raise a good point because a lot of our members might not understand exactly how intricate it is to get something like an infrastructure package done because it's just not TNI. It's also ways and means. It's also energy and commerce. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the interplay uh, in, in your experience of, uh, in Congress about how a piece, a big bill like that, will come together with all those different chairmen and uh, the uh, individual, you know, constituencies that they, they, have, they have to serve? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question because in the end, if we don't figure that out, we don't pass anything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you might be able to pass something out of the house, but. Um, as we all know from our civics lessons, it's, it takes more than just passing it out of the House. We need the Senate. We need the White House to all agree. Why don't we use an example that is very fresh also out of today. The, uh, today, the president signed the uh, USMCA, the trade deal, the United States, Mexico, Canada trade agreement. Um, and the way that came together, I think, is a blueprint for how we ought to look at our transportation bill mm -hmm. that we're going to pass. And, um, it, and think about this from a political uh, perspective and even from a governmental perspective. In the end, we had the House, the Senate get together on this. Mm -hmm. You had Democrats and Republicans. You had the White House. And even in the end, you had your farmers and AFL-CIO, CIO, organized labor, all say that this was a good deal. Mm -hmm. um, that Let's use that model. And I will throw out um, Trade Ambassador Lighthizer who's in the Trump administration as really someone who um, was ready for this moment in that I can't think of any meeting that we asked for um, or anybody asked for that he wouldn't participate in. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's going to take that same view of bipartisan, bipartisanship and um, the House and the Senate working together. And then in the end, um, we can't just pass this without um, having a pay for. And if, if that's where the White House comes in. That is where the White House comes in. And um, Richie Neal, who is the chair of Ways and Means, this morning out of our caucus meeting, said that we are not going to get into the specifics of how this will be paid for um, until we all come together and have an agreement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody who wants to look at the political side of things knows that um, you know you're not just going to have one side of the aisle say, you know, this is how we're going to pay for it without um, having the other side of the aisle have buy-in to that as well. I mean, things like the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund mm -hmm. have are brought up in pretty much every discussion yeah. because we have the money in there that we need, but the general fund keeps robbing from it. That can't keep happening. Um, but um, th this investment is absolutely critical. Um, I know firsthand from looking at, exa for example, at the Chicago Rockford International Airport which is in the northern part of my congressional district. Okay, the, the economic impact of that airport um, will close in to probably about $2 billion a year soon. Um, why? Because they have turned that into the fastest growing air cargo hub in the world. Um, and so we need our engineers. I wanna do a shout out to the how important the engineers are to uh, making sure that we are looking at things like air cargo hubs and improving our airports. If anybody saw the 60 minute segment from a couple months ago, um, we've got to improve our airports to be competitive on the world stage. We are falling behind. Yeah. Um, you know, when in the Eisenhower era, um, what made us this powerhouse is that we could move our goods to market more efficiently than um, anybody else. We could move our people more efficiently than any anything else. We could move our information mm -hmm faster than anybody else. And we're falling behind on that. And that's right. what this is all about. Yeah, and that's, and that's a really good point. I think that uh, there's a, a common theme in the House, and I think for our listeners who are focused on what's happening on the major news channels to realize that behind the scenes, especially in the House, that there's always going to be some bipartisan agreement on infrastructure. And there's always going to be that desire to move the ball forward and to really address things. I think that one of the issues that is uh, of increasing importance also 
And I think, you know, I heard in the last Congress the same, which is the issue of resiliency, of dealing with the environment that we have and that we're going to be inheriting uh, in the next couple of years, and the fact that engineers have to deal with the world as it is and have to design for the future so that the bridges, the buildings, the roads are going to last there for 20, 30 years. And the issue of resiliency and dealing with sustainability and, and, and issues related to climate change and, and changing environment was also uh, a theme of what was rolled out today. From a rural district, from an agricultural district, that's also important. Um, how important do you see the issue of resiliency in terms of infrastructure and economic development in your district? No, I think it's critically important. And, and it was, um, I would say, of the one hour presentation that we had this morning, that took up a good part of it. Um, everything from uh, Chairman DeFazio talked about an electric spine or an electric backbone mm -hmm. uh, to, to this project. And that is, you know, building out the infrastructure of if we're increasingly going to no emission vehicles or electric vehicles, um, you can't just have this without having the infrastructure to support it. Um, and it's and even the materials that we're using and, and certainly your engineers who are in the practice of building roads and bridges and improving rail and all that know a lot more about that than I do as we sit here. But that will be very important that we are, as you said, um, getting ready for the future. We're, we're building things now or we'll build things next year, but you're right, they have to be resilient through for the next you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, I, I look outside of my front door when I'm at home in Moline, Illinois. I live on River Drive. Um, and by the way, that river that's just on the other side of that road is yeah. the Mississippi. But I see this $1.2 billion bridge that is under construction um, from Moline, Illinois to Bettendorf, Iowa. And I count the cranes every time I walk along our little bike path and walking path there. And you know, you count as many as 15 cranes that are up. And um, you know, you realize um, how important what we're talking about right now, how important your engineers are uh, to economic growth mm -hmm. and um, economic sustainability for communities. And again, to your point of, of this bridge is being built right now and it's replacing a bridge that was built in the 50s, um, one span, and I think the other span was built in the 30s. So, you know, these things have to last a long time and they, uh, the, the engineering is, is very, very important to this. It is. And, and I, I love seeing those cranes because I know with every one of those cranes there's jobs associated with that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a big economic driver and um, it's truly amazing what our members are able to produce and, and, and the challenges that they're able to uh, surmount with um, their talent and then also just, uh, um, you know, good working relationships between local, federal, and state governments and, and, and the industry at large. Um, I know that we're um, a little bit uh, uh, tight on time and we want to respect your, your schedule. So is, are any parting thoughts that you want to offer to our audience? And of, of course, you know, the, the members of the, uh, of the Illinois uh, engineering community who will be listening to the podcast. Yeah, um, so my oldest son uh, went to Iowa State and was an engineering major, so um, mechanical though, not, not civil. Uh, they're still members. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I just have a great appreciation for actually the brain power that uh, um, engineers have and your thought process that you put into everything and, and really the importance to all of our communities for, um, for the work that, that your members do. And, um, and, and let me just, I, I probably just echo what you just said, but those working relationships are, are very, very important. Um, our office has a very close relationship with ACEC. You've been um, great at keeping us informed. I hope that you see um, our office is one that wants to make sure that you're informed and we seek your counsel. And um, I, I think uh, good days are ahead. And, and um, again, from a political perspective, which, you, you know, it, it, good, good policy is good politics and, um, and vice versa, but, Infrastructure and rebuilding America is something that uh, we as Democrats campaigned on going into 2018. Um, it is what President Trump as candidate Trump campaigned on going into 2016. And um, my, our friends across the aisle also campaigned on this. So when you've got all of those elements saying we've got to get this done, I think that is, uh, the, I hope that's a telling sign that we're going to be able to make something big happen. Um, that we can pass the House, the Senate, and the President will sign it into law, and, um, and we have a lot of good work ahead of us. That's great. Well, there we have it. Uh, brighter days ahead, and a uh, uh, hopeful message to end the podcast on. Uh, Representative Bustos, thank you so much for being on, and we hope to have you on in the future. Thank you.